What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here. After posting up some footage of me doing a few sets of heavy dips and chin-ups, I had a subscriber ask me if I could make a video about how to best progress on these two movements. So let's get to it. Now before we get into it, I just want to clarify that the goal of the training I'm going to describe is to increase your maximal strength on these two movements. So your ability to move more and more additional weight rather than doing more reps with just your body weight. In my opinion, increasing maximal dipping and chinning strength is way cooler than being able to do a million reps with just your body weight and is also going to have more carryover to a larger variety of different lifts and activities as well as lead to greater hypertrophy in the long term. For optimal development, I recommend doing both exercises twice a week. So one day will be a heavy day where you ramp up to a maximal set on both exercises and the other day will be a volume day where we do straight sets and maybe even a drop set or two to really ramp up the workload. Let's start with the heavy day. Right now I'm doing heavy dips and chins paired together after bench pressing on one of my upper body days. I don't find the bench press work to be much of a hindrance to the dip, so doing it afterwards isn't a very big deal. But if you didn't care about bench pressing, you could even use the weighted dip as your primary upper body pressing exercise if you wanted to. This is something I'm considering doing myself. Anyway, as far as sets and reps go, this day is going to be somewhat auto-regulated. The goal will be to work your way up to a heavy set of three to five reps on both exercises and then do a few back off sets based on how heavy you were able to work up to for your top set. I prefer to start out with fives on the dip and work my way down to threes as it gets heavier. Whereas with the chin up, I just stick with threes the whole way through. My reasoning for this is simply because through experience, I found that once you fatigue the lats and the biceps, they don't really recover. And this drastically reduces the amount of weight you can work up to, which is going to limit your strength gains. So it's best to just keep the reps low here. Whereas the dip actually seems to benefit from the additional accrual of volume as you work up. Also for this session, I recommend doing chin-ups. This is with your palms facing you as opposed to pull-ups because you should be a little bit stronger that way. So for example, a typical session might go something like this. If we have a hypothetical lifter who weighs 175 pounds and has a three rep max of 150 pounds on the dip and 125 pounds on the chin up, you can see that for his first four series, he uses the same amount of weight for both exercises and does five reps on all sets of dips and three reps on all the sets of chins. But by the fifth series, the weights for the two exercises begin to diverge. He's closer to his max on the chin up, so he starts taking smaller jumps there. Finally, on the sixth series, he reaches his top set of the day for the chin up, and at this point, he's forced to drop from fives to threes on the dip as well. At this point, he takes a break from the chin up for series seven and executes one final set of dips in order to reach his top set for the day on that exercise. Now it's time to move into the back off work. For this portion of the workout, he's going to determine the amount of weight he'll use by calculating the total system weight. He wants to do his back off work at about 85% of the total weight he moved during his top set. So for example, his top set of dips was three reps with 145 pounds plus his body weight of 175 pounds. That means he moved a total of 320 pounds on his, on his top set of dips. 85% of this is about 270 pounds. So if we subtract his body weight, we can see he should be using an additional 95 pounds for his back off work on dips. Doing the same calculation for the chin up, we can see that he moved 290 pounds for his top set and he should be moving about 245 pounds for his back off work. So he's going to need to use an additional 70 pounds here. For this portion of the workout, I recommend doing an additional two to three sets in the six to eight rep range. In total, this gives us anywhere from eight to 10 working sets on both exercises and anywhere from approximately 40 to 55 total reps on the dip and approximately 30 to 40 total reps on the chin up. That's a good amount of relatively heavy volume mixed in with some nice high intensity work as well, which produces a solid workout that is gonna lead to some awesome gains. However, on its own, it's not enough. We need to pair that work together with some lower intensity progressive volume work done on a separate day to continually drive the gains train forward. Let's go over the volume day now. All the board, motherfuckers. The volume session is going to start out around 80% of the total system weight of the three rep max on both exercises. So in this case, our lifter's three rep max on the dip is 150 pounds, yielding a total system weight of 325 pounds. 80% of this is 260 pounds. 
So when we subtract his body weight, we see that he's going to start out using an additional 85 pounds on week one for his volume dip work. His three rep max chin up is 125 pounds, yielding a total system weight of 300 pounds, 80% of which is 240 pounds. When we subtract his body weight, we see that he's going to start out using an additional 65 pounds on week one of his volume chin-up session. For this session, I recommend switching your grip for the pull-up movement. So instead of doing chins with the palms facing towards you, you can either do pull-ups with your palms facing away from you, or if you have access to a neutral grip pull-up bar, you can use that grip also. I recommend using the neutral grip here if you have access to one, as that's going to keep elbow stress to a minimum. And with all this volume, some of you may start to experience some elbow issues. So this is an important point that should not be overlooked. Now the goal with these volume sessions is to slowly, and I must emphasize slowly, increase the intensity over time while keeping volume constant. You're going to do five sets of five reps on each exercise, performing the exercises in an alternating fashion. And you're going to add two and a half pounds to each exercise every week until this becomes unmanageable. Contrast this with the heavy day, which is auto-regulate. You only go as heavy as you can on that day, and your back off work is dependent on how high you go. On the volume day, we start out with a manageable fixed percentage and slowly work our way up from there. It's important to realize that at some point you will hit a wall here. If you progress as slowly as I suggest, you should be able to maintain your course for a few months, depending on how strong you are at these movements when you first start. But eventually they will stagnate. If you fail to complete your volume work for three consecutive weeks, or your performance begins to drop on your top sets on the heavy day for several weeks in a row, then it's time to change things up. At this point, I recommend switching your pulling focus onto a rowing movement of some sort and removing the dip from your programming in favor of perhaps the incline press or the overhead press or whatever pressing movement you haven't done in a while. After six to eight weeks or so, you can re-implement the weighted dip and chin up into your programming and run this progression scheme again, and you should see a fresh batch of nice new gains after the short layoff. And that pretty much covers it. If you run this program to a T and give these movements the effort, intensity, and respect they deserve, then you can expect to see some very good progress on your upper body pushing and pulling strength after two to three months of this progression. And the gains in your arms, delts, pecs, and lats will prove that you put in some serious work on these two old school strength training staples. And that's all I got for now, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com. Also, if you truly like the video or you simply enjoy the content that I produce, please spread the word and share it somewhere and help make Forest of Wolves Gym one of the biggest fitness channels on YouTube. Keep training hard and I'll catch you guys next time.